Hi there and welcome to the 18th Q&A session and here I'll be answering your, some of your tech related questions and again I've got a variety of questions ranging from Android phones, smartphones to which processor, which graphic card etc. Uh, let's get on with it and the first question I get is from Ramya Shankar and he asked me thanks Ranjit you are doing a great job thank you I want you to suggest me a router in the range of rupees uh, 4000 Indian rupees that's approximately about uh, $75 I want uh, uh, it to connect to my hard drive and share it data files on my laptop and tablet and my mobile. Uh, what Ramya Shankar wants is basically a Wi-Fi router which has a USB port using which he can attach a portable hard drive and share the contents of its uh, drive on his network. And almost all Wi-Fi routers which have a USB port at the back do support this functionality. I would suggest that you look at this Asus RTN13U that should be more than enough for your requirement and it sells in India for about rupees 3000 or so and you can also look at this uh, what do you say TP-Link model that I had reviewed earlier it has gigabyte ports and between these two models uh, they should serve your needs I hope this info helps and the next question comes from Arkel Blaze and he asked me hey Randit I want to ask that can we install Mac OS X on Windows and can we dual boot uh, with it if so how is it possible please make a video about it what you are uh, trying to do is technically not uh, what do you say uh, possible but by hacking it you can do it and this method of installing what do you say mac os x on non mac hardware that is windows based hardware is known as hackintoshing and i have already made a video about this i would say do not get into this it's not straightforward and the pitfalls are more than the rewards but again you can definitely make a good hackintosh uh, I have already made a video regarding this. Uh, you can check out that video for more info. And you can also check out this website that is Tony Mac OS X uh, Hackintosh or something like that. The link will be shown here. And these guys deal with Hackintosh. So if you know, want to mo know more about Hackintosh, this is the site to visit. I hope this info helps. And the next question again comes from Arkel Blaze. Uh, and he asks, hey, Ranjit, I want to ask what's the main logic uh, behind the function of safe to remove USB drives in Windows? Uh, the, actually this is the safest method to remove uh, what you said removable hard drive for example let's say a pen drive or a hard drive that you have attached to your computer for example if you do not use that option let's say uh, you just uh, remove that uh, hard drive from the USB port it windows might be accessing some files etc on that hard drive and if you just remove it without using that option the files might uh, get corrupt so it's always uh, a good idea to use the safe to remove uh, option uh, before plugging uh, you, uh, out USB devices and again even in Mac OS X if you just plug it, uh, out a device like this it will give a huge warning that the data might have got corrupted so to safeguard your data it is always advisable to use that safe to remove option when removing USB uh, thumb drives or uh, USB hard drives from your computer and the next question comes from Abhim Seven, and he uh, says I'm planning to buy a netbook under rupees 10,000 please suggest me which one should I buy my main objective is to serve the internet also it should be Wi-Fi enabled and have Windows OS Abhim uh, from the past two years I haven't been following this netbook scene uh, I would say that if you just want to do ca casual web browsing etc I would suggest that go for a tablet because these tablets are much faster I have earlier used what do you say these uh, netbooks and they generally use this atom processor and they are not average they are not that great again if some of you guys have recently purchased a netbook and they are priced below 10,000 or so please share your uh, opinion in the comment section below it will be highly appreciated uh, the next question comes from Nam, uh, Preet Singh and uh, the question goes like this. I want to buy a tablet in the range of rupees 30,000. Requirement is as follows for editing and making Word, Excel, PowerPoint documents. Uh, we'll buy a separate keyboard. So please recommend one too. Uh, movie watching, a lot of music, heavy gaming, ebook reading, heavy internet usage, email and good battery life. Uh, the first obvious uh, thing is that uh, for this pricing range you can go for the iPad, the new iPad. The Wi-Fi only will cost you about 29,000. It's a good tablet and that's also good and you get third party what do you say keyboards also for that. If you want to move to the Android uh, uh, ecosystem, I would suggest go for the Asus Transformer or the uh, Galaxy 10.1 tablet. These are very good tablets and certainly uh, they can accomplish the task that you want. I hope this info helps and the next uh, question comes from raiku2 and hi ranjit your reviews are very good and in depth i like them thank you can you help me uh, i want a nice phone for around rupees 14 to fifteen thousand. i have these phones in my mind uh, for now 
Motorola Defi Plus, Nokia Lumia 710, HTC Desire C, Micromax A90. Uh, well, going for Windows Phone be a good option. Does Motorola Defi Plus really have problems? A lot of questions. So I'll go in the reverse order. Uh, regarding Motorola Defi Plus, does it really have problems? I have uh, already reviewed this phone earlier about six months ago. And yes, this phone exhibited the reboot problem. And in my testing in, in about three days, it rebooted automatically for about two days, uh, two times, sorry. So I feel this reboot issue is there, but I have no idea if Motorola has solved it right away. Uh, so if uh, just check out Motorola forums and the user comments if this problem still exists otherwise it's a great phone but I just do not recommend this phone because of this random reboot problem uh, next uh, we're going for Windows phone be a good option personally I did not uh, like the Windows phone as of now uh, and I would not suggest you to go for a Windows phone now because right now the Windows phone that are selling are running on uh, Windows 7.1 and they won't be upgradable to the Windows 8 uh, phones that will be OS that will be coming out soon. So as of now, I do not recommend Windows phone. If you want, wait for a while. In next about 4-5 months, you will find Windows 8 based phones. Then you can go for that. And uh, uh, the other phones that you have uh, mentioned, HTC Desire C, I haven't reviewed about this phone so I can't comment. Uh, Micromax A90 looks like a very good phone. I would, I'm going to review this phone. I generally do not uh, comment about products that I haven't tested. So uh, Micromax A90 looks like a good phone but uh, just wait for my re uh, review before you make the decision. I hope this info helps. And the next question comes from Gagan Singh. Uh, Hi sir, can you please do a review of Micromax A100? I heard that it's a dual core phone, priced at Rs. 9900. I have already done the review of this Micromax A100, uh, but again, it's not a dual core phone. Many people are mistaking it for a dual core phone. It's a single core one gigahertz phone. And you can check out my review for info regarding uh, that. And I feel it's a very good phone for about 9500 or so. Uh, the next question comes from Abhigyan Bose and this is a peculiar question. Hey Ranjit, I'm studying computer science and engineering. I want to do unboxing, testing and benchmarking new products. How can I get into this line of work? Uh, there's no formal way to get into this line of work. I'm sure you must be having a couple of gadgets of your own like your mobile phone, computers, etc. Uh, start by reviewing those products and post it on your website or if you are going to make uh, videos on YouTube and uh, look at the audience response and improve that's the way you get into this that's how i started and again if you think that if you just write to a company they'll send you products you are definitely mistaken they won't do that i uh, these case uh, i these days do get some products from companies for review but again uh, i have been in this industry for a long time uh, so again uh, the only advice that i can give you is start by reviewing gadgets that you already own and gauge the audience response and improve upon that. Uh, again, if you think that uh, you're gonna make a ton of money you are doing this, I wanna say that you're definitely wrong. I do not make a lot of money doing this. I put in a lot of hard work. So if you think that you're gonna make a lot of money by just uh, reviewing this stuff, you're totally mistaken. I hope this info helps. And the next question comes from Big Dash Ziana. Uh, Radit sir, all your videos are awesome. I have uh, purchased Samsung Galaxy Ace. I wanna know all the pros and cons of routing thank you uh, the pros of uh, routing your phone is that you have complete control over the phone for example let's say uh, your manufacturer for example Samsung has added some of the unnecessary apps you can definitely remove that also one more big advantage of uh, routing is that let's say uh, the manufacturer is not upgrading your Android version from let's say uh, gingerbread to ice cream sandwich you might find a wrong uh, for your phone that uh, enables uh, ice cream sandwich so you can get an upgrade path if your manufacturer has stopped that also you get a lot of control over your phone if you route it for example you can improve the battery life by underclocking the processor you can also do the reverse for example you can overclock your processor so all these things are possible uh, by unlocking your phone you have actually full control over your phone the cons of doing unlocking is that uh, most of the time the manufacturers will void the warranty so if you something wrong happens with your phone you can't just go back to your manufacturer and ask for warranty they will mostly deny it uh, the second thing is that uh, though uh, routing is pretty easy follow the steps carefully uh, things should not go wrong but there is a small chance of things going wrong and if they go wrong you can completely brick your device so that's 
these are the two cons of uh, what do you say uh, rooting your phone i'm not into pro or con i generally do not root my phones because uh, i generally like to test products uh, with the stock experience what you get from the manufacturer i hope this info helps uh, next question is from sino and uh, he says uh, your question and answer sessions have been great uh, help to me thank you uh, can you please tell me a good graphic card priced around rupees 10000 which will give me a great gaming experience on a gaming pc uh, plan to build one soon with a core i5 gigabyte z77 board with 8 gb of ram see you for your budget of about uh, 10 uh, 10000 i would suggest that you can go for a ati 6850 this card should uh, get you uh, for about 10,200 or 10,500 or so. Always go for the DDR5 memory type model. And if you can't get this card, you can go also for this uh, ATI, uh, what do you say, 7770. Uh, this is a new card by ATI and this should be about 9,500. So I hope this info helps. Uh, and the last question comes from Priyanka. Uh, and this is again a peculiar question uh, about overclocking. What exactly is overclocking and how can it be done? For example, if I overclock a 2 GHz processor to a 4 GHz, will the processing speed double? Do all processor support overclocking and does it also depend upon the motherboard? Again, the first thing I want to tell you, Priyanka, is if you overclock your 2 GHz processor to 4 GHz, which might not be possible, you will just fry it. Okay. Uh, for example, you just can't double the, the speed of your processor by overclocking. You can uh, do modest overclocking for, let's say, if your processor is 2 GHz, you can overclock it to about 2.4 or 2.5 gigahertz but again uh, you need to be very careful while overclocking again it will depend on a couple of things first is the actual processor itself and the second thing is your motherboard should support overclocking facilities like uh, multiplier adjustment and adjusting the voltage again uh, uh, by uh, if you go with the entry parts generally the uh, k models uh, have uh, unlocked multiplier and it's very easy to manipulate them and get a modest overclocking but if you want to do serious overclocking again you should know what you are doing before playing with voltages because if you apply uh, things wrongly or and uh, overclocking aggressively you can definitely fry your cpu and again uh, the misconception is that if you overclock your processor from let's say uh, 2 to 4 gigahertz which is not possible Again, you won't get a 100% speed because there are other variables also in the computer. So these were the questions for the 18th q &A session. If you would like that I answer some of your tech related questions, please post them below in the comment section and start with the Q&A tag and answer them in the next uh, Q&A session that I'll do next week. That's it for now. This is Ranjit from techtobus.com and I hope to see you in my next video.